Hey y'all, it's enemy. Oh shit. <laughs> I hit my TV there for a sec by accident. Woo! All right, hey y'all, it's Anime Cayman, and today I am gonna be live reacting to, you know, episode 10 in one zero go. All right. Let's hope that woman doesn't accidentally jinx Tokyo. I wouldn't mind if the rat got jinxed and fucking died. But as long as Tokyo's okay, then I'm good. Hmm. <laughs> That's actually a good question. Hmm. If makes me wonder if it's some kind of prison because there's a Skeleton body there, but then again, it can't be a prison because there would probably be multiple bars if that were the case, so who knows? <laughs> I'm just fucking eager to find out. <laughs> you know, the more I listen to this opening, the more it kind of grows on me. At least the song. Hmm. But yeah. Gotta say though, go on, now that I think about going by how Takya hasn't used the time travel device, I'm assuming he's gonna have to whip that shit out in this episode. I could be completely wrong though, <clears throat> but I just got a feeling because we haven't seen him use it since like the Ayumi arc, so. I mean, I think that's gonna be the case. Uh, or maybe he won't use it, but he'll find maybe one of those blue spears or gem things to beef up its capabilities. It could go either one of those two routes. At least those are my theories, y'all. Alright, the episode's about to start. Now we're at the portion of the opening where it's got the elf chick. And it's back! Episode 10 fillings and we're lit. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, probably the painting? <clears throat> Is he referring to that? Oh my! <laughs> this dude! Yeah, he had probably deserved it. <clears throat> He's a rat that needs constant punching. Hmm. Oh, okay, so I guess I wasn't too far off from calling it some kind of prison then. Hmm. <clears throat> but going by a lot of these type of animes or any type of movies or shows with explorations and small claustrophobic places like that, there's usually some kind of trap. Usually. Hmm. All right. Hmm. You know, he actually has a good point. So... He has a good point considering that it is... This is ancient as hell, yet it's all high-tech stuff. You would think the rat would have gone and... At the very least, used to seeing skeletons after the first appearance of one. Hmm. 
Oh! That means... Hopefully she isn't already dead. That shit would be crazy! <laughs> oh, this baka! Honestly, if the rat dies, I wouldn't really mind. Yes! Die, motherfucker! Die like the rat you are! Then again, I would feel sorry for Takia, though. But fuck you, Yuki! Yeah, that's definitely the torture chamber. I love this shit. Perfect thumbnail! Yeah, you're learning about me, but... Oh, yes. The music's beautiful. Oh, yes! I love it. No, Yuki. Stay asleep. Stay asleep like the dead rat you are. You know, Tiger could just trouble back in time, though. All right. Cool. All right, singing like that quick thinking. <laughs> and I do like how it shows off a bit of Takia's mercifulness too. Hope we'll get a punch again. Oh. I'm happy with this too. Although Gwamba always seeing the Ayumi um, arc that we saw a few episodes ago. I'm assuming the rat's gonna find some dumbass way of getting himself killed. And I like how they're just speeding through all this stuff, and I also like how it's showing us the maturity of the sensei, because they're walking past all this shit, and she's not reacting to the skeletons. So I kind of like that. It shows off a bit of her wisdom. Two. And it shows her mental maturity. So in a way, I like how it gives off characterization this sequence to other people. It's pretty nice. Oh no! Fuck! No! I actually like Mitsugi, so hopefully she doesn't die. Woo! <laughs> I mean, didn't oh, I guess that's understandable. <laughs> I was about to say, didn't they already do it together before? But then again, I guess that's understandable. <laughs> and I'm with Vincent Gither. Takia was probably BSing and he copped a 
such, knowing how, knowing what we know about him. Probably was because they do have more modern looking clothing though. Wait. Oh, that's one of the chicks from the opening. Oh my. Damn. I'm sure there's gotta be something similar though. Just that hasn't hasn't been found yet. <laughs> hmm. Holy! What the? Damn! Okay, at least we know what to, you know how to actually name it then. And why did she have that weird ass stir when reflector device was mentioned? It's kind of eerie as hell. Yep, so she is being possessed by that Ryo Shoji dude. What? All right, if I would talk to you, I'd be like, okay, I'll give it to you. And I would subtly touch my hand pocket while pressing the riff, the device. Come on, Takia. Just slowly put your hand on your back pocket. No! No! Shit! Oh, okay, I thought our boy was killed. Whew. That got me. That was some crazy shit. Alright, so she's finding the hypnosis. It has to be. Alright. I like how it shows off Mitsuki's strong will. Damn it, Takia! Just knock the gun out of her hand or press the reflector device. Damn it! Just pull your goddamn hand in the back pocket, you fucking fool! Okay, that was some bad writing there, y'all, in that specific sequence. For one, he should have already had his hand in the band pocket. And two, I felt like the script was like, oh shit, we gotta find some BS way of having Taka get out of the situation, you know? Because really, to have bad aim like that when you're in such close range with, uh, with the pistol like that? Come on now. That's not... The writers fucked it up there. I'm sure it isn't an issue in the visual novel. Because they probably have their bases covered, but... Whoever fucked it up, which is the writer or the directing staff, it's hoping they don't do that shit again. Oh! 
Could it be another, um, one of those gemstones for the reflector device? Oh, never mind. <laughs> but maybe there will be a, some kind of stone for the reflector device, hopefully. Hmm. One we're gonna see. Meal? Yo! Okay, I was on the money there. <laughs> but how the hell did you end up there? <laughs> oh my, our boy Taka even when knocked the fuck out. Yes, perfect aim. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> Had a feeling he would actually say that, but damn. Oh, that's sweet. And I just love how she ignores that request like a boss. She's getting used to Takia's antics. Well, in this situation, it definitely is real. Mm-hmm. Okay, for a second I thought Rock was gonna land on her. I was like, whoo! I was just too paranoid. Oh my! Well, I guess it's understandable because they don't want her to catch cold. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right, thoroughly she figured it out. <clears throat> what? Oh, trying to back up his friend. <laughs> She's wise as hell, actually. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the very least, though, Taki has backed up his bro. Even though he's a fucking. Tsuki's a fucking rat that doesn't deserve Takia!
Uh, at least you're sticking it mature. You're sticking it all in, in a mature way, gotta say. <laughs> oh! Oh, yes! Woo! Okay! I like this! If YouTube wasn't such a fucking bitch with its community guideline strikes on occasions, I would have used that as a thumbnail. But they'd probably be like, no, it's too inappropriate to know that shit. Most likely, if I were to use that as a thumbnail. Ah, That's sweet. Such a man, he didn't even take advantage of that situation. I like that. Shows you his, eth his ethical fortitude and all that kind of jazz. I love it. Mm-hmm. That's a good move, but it can't take too long, though, because it was established in the previous episode that there's only a certain amount of time, though, a reflector device can actually go back. Wait, could that be the voice of his mother? I'm assuming that's the mother, even though we didn't get a look at her face. But with the way she's talking with some kind of like gentle tone. Oh! Y'all. I didn't think I was gonna call that shit, but alright. And this episode, it just knows how to tug on your emotions. My, my. Now, here are my thoughts about this episode from a story standpoint. I thought for the most part it was well composed, so at least we got to find the name of the device that Takia uses. And additionally, it kind of got a lot of things out of the way at the very least. Now we know that Mio knows that it wasn't Takia that did it, but it was actually Yuki the, that was the fucking rat that caused all that shit to put the shit on the bullets and born. So I like that, because at the very least, a lot of those plot elements are now out of the way. And additionally, now we know that real Shoji is actually the one. It's confirmed that he's the one that's got hypnosis all over Mitsugi's mind. So that was pretty nice. And I felt that this episode was a payoff towards all the buildup it had. Where Mitsugi was having all these headaches and all that. So that was pretty nice because if it didn't have all that buildup, it wouldn't have had as much impact in this specific episode. I'd say the only fumble in this episode was again when Mitsugi wasn't, um, when she was fighting it, the hypnosis, and you didn't see Takia running away and all of that. I felt that this episode would have been more realistic if it would have had Takia take the opportunity to run away. Now, let me just stay here for a few more seconds so that she has enough time to aim the fucking gun. And then you have Mitsuki, you have like fucking Takia in a straight line of fire. And then she just fucking misses the shot because Takia has plot armor. That's how it felt like the writing at the very least in this, in that specific sequence in the episode. Everything else that didn't include that kind of stuff was great and well written. And that specific moment wasn't well written. And I got to drop a point off my rescore for this specific episode because of that, because... Honestly, I just gotta call it out. When other animes do that shit, I call that shit out. And I gotta stay, keep consistent in my scores. Doesn't mean this episode's not... Um, not good though, because episode's still good. But that kind of shit... We've gotta hope that that kind of shit doesn't appear in future episodes. But that was like the only flaw though. Because overall though, the story was engaging. Aside from that slight blemish. And for other stuff in this episode... Like the characters, I actually liked it. 
it gave a lot of characterization to an extent to Mitsugi because, for one, it shows off that her bond with Taki is good to the point where she would be able to, at the very least to an extent, resist some of Ryojoshi's hypnosis. And now that whole sequence, not sequence, that whole background information on her and Takia having sex in the past, it actually helps it helps give weight as to why she was able to resist because she was she had like that kind of relationship with Takia in the past. So I actually like that. And additionally, aside from showing Mitsugi's strong mental fortitude to be able to resist the hypnosis to an extent, I like how it shows Neil's maturity, how she was able to figure out that it was actually Yuki that did the deed. And that explains why she was a, she kissed the photo in a few episodes ago. She already figured it out before all this shit went down. So that was also nice and puts into context a bit of the stuff in last week's episode. You see Takio's maturity too because now he's so used to this shit that when he saw a fucking skeleton, he didn't react at all. And so I thought I did well from a character standpoint, I gotta say. And that's why I'm gonna rate this episode a 7 out of 10. I still thought this episode was above average in my book. Just that whole thing I mentioned kept it from an 8 out of 10 status, but still enjoyed what I saw overall. So anyways, guys and gals, these are my thoughts on the episode. Comment down your thoughts in the comments section below. Rate the video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later if you just got for more. I'm right. Thank you all so much for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.